Okay, welcome small gathering to this uh, radical independence campaign meeting on what we hope is the resistible <laughs> rise of the right wing. Um, I'm Eileen and I'm going to chair it, but hopefully with so few people we can be fairly informal. So um, I'm wearing clothing, wait, I'm wearing my anti-Nazi league t-shirt, which is one of the many organisations that I'm sure Willie Lack, who's going to be our main speaker, has been in in the past. And um, so he's going to be, he's had many decades of fighting, fighting racism and the rise of fascism. And I'm sure many of us have been really worried about what's been happening recently. And certainly some of the things that seem to be happening are perhaps things that just wouldn't have happened um, some time ago. So, hopefully yeah. Willie's going to tell us a bit about what yeah. we can do. Well, as far as the Anti-Nazi League, I still pay a fiver. I don't know where it goes, <laughs> but I still, I've never cancelled, so uh, it still goes somewhere um, into the fight. I, I was really cheered up today um, because something happened on, on the news, which was obviously everywhere. People saw um, the resistance uh, to transportation. Um, the, a young Swedish woman, a uh, girl, mm -hmm. uh, stood up on a plane and refused to sit down and photograph and filmed ourselves on our, fo our phone till uh, uh, somebody from Afghanistan uh, was removed from the plane uh, where the person was being deported. And I thought that was really, really, you know, it's no the total answer, but it's a start, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and if people are seeing that and they see the courage, uh, or young individuals uh, in particular standing up for the right things. Uh, it's really good. The thing about the, the, the far right is that I think they've shifted um, from our traditional uh, view of fascism or racism. The first thing to say, I think, is uh, and to, for socialists in particular, is that we, we don't think there is races. We think there is one race. And that's called the human race, and anybody that's looked at the genetic um, makeup of human beings can discover that probably. I read, I read something they do, I don't even know if it's true, but it's probably good. Uh, that there is the difference in, in, a, in a, a newt's eye is, the, is, the gap, is wider than between two human beings uh, for any part of the world. So we, we say that, so if there is no race, and, and we're right, then why is there racism? Where, where does it come from? How does it um, emerge? Has it always been there? Because if it's always been there within society, within the, the various phases of, of human existence, then we probably are in deep trouble because it will have a different route, it will have a different um, mechanism or means to, to... There was always... I mean, I've, I've been looking at... Uh, ancient sites, Roman sites and things like that as part of other life um, and uh, discovered that people had uh, holes in, their, in their, their skulls so somebody must have done it, somebody must have thumped them at one time, killed them and whatever. So there was death and there was war and there was all those other um, aspects of, of tribal war etc etc. But for socialists we tie that and the rise of what we call racism today into um, the emergence of capitalism. That actually capitalism is the, the form in which um, it it's allows itself um, the ruling classes uh, to be able to divide and rule. Uh, it's one of their tools, it's not their only tool, but they're certainly, if we look and see how racism is used uh, to divide uh, people, and particularly to divide workers, uh, then you begin to see some of the problems. So what, what I think we've got to say is that the early days of capitalism, uh, when it was first formed, racism was an, an intricate part of it. Um, it. It probably didn't start by thinking, you know, these, the, the racism is going to be handy for us. But actually, when they, when they built, uh, the British in particular and the Dutch, uh, built the first and capitalist societies, or parts of the industrial capitalist society, 
very quickly, uh, when you look at the Americas, you find that the whole justification for um, having slaves, for instance, um, was based on inferiority, that these people were subhuman. Uh, and that still echoes all the way down to today, and I'll come on to Hungary and places like that, where, where a lot of this language now is being used to justify um, racism, something which I believe was was being checked by the after the Second World War. Uh, we found the defeat of fascism, that's to do scientific, you know, where you go and you check the, the bumps on people's heads and the diameter of their heads and whatever and find that uh, uh, people um, who they call um, um, Negroes were inferior because of the scientific, pseudo-scientific. That was the bump um, by, by uh, it no longer was fashionable or being justified. Anybody who came out with that rubbish uh, was quickly uh, pushed to the side uh, and uh, quite justified in, in that. So I think that what we're seeing is that when it came to the question First of all, of course, in, in America, um, many of the people who, who picked cotton and worked in the plantations and stuff like that were actually indentured. Um, when slaves were actually white uh, from various parts, you know, they were either transported there for so-called crimes, criminality, or whatever it was, maybe stealing a chicken, maybe. Um, but they were indentured for that seven years in the hoodie. But very quickly, because of that, the nature of that labour and the hard graft that the, the, the owners uh, demanded, uh, labour dried up. So they needed masses amount of people. And clearly, uh, they looked to um, Africa uh, and other parts of the world, to and mainly Africa, of course. And in their millions, they brought slaves uh, to America uh, and fueled that whole slave economy uh, that was integrated into the early parts of, of, of capitalism. So what we, what we did find is that they then had to justify it because there was resistance. There was always resistance to that idea of slavery, on, 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 on particularly on that scale, and people were um, trying to combat it and whatever. So they had to come up with that pseudo-science um, uh, and justify it on the basis that some people were inferior and therefore the superior people um, would, would be able to do that. Obviously, when, when you look back in history, you find that the Romans uh, Empire, other empires, used some of that language as well, but not on the same basis. It was usually based on that people were savages. And of course, that was used in America to, with the indigenous uh, population, that somehow these were inferior, they were savages, and civilization had to, uh, had to deprive them of uh, the American, um, American land. So what you would then see was that racism become part of the, 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 the means in which the, the people could be justified in the in, in humanity that uh, they, were, they were exposed to, whether it be somebody described uh, being shipped to America uh, like sardines in a tin, uh, deprived of food, deprived of uh, water, etc. And obviously many of them died at, at sea. On, on, that, on that basis. But with the end of slavery and also the end of empire, and then you look at the way that the British Empire and other empires uh, were created, racism was part and parcel of, of the justification for that. That these, and you hear that sometimes, you know, that what, what, is, what did the British ever do for India? Well, they brought all this, they did that, they brought civil servants, they, they did universities, all that, that, that rubbish, but also they, they obviously exploited uh, the, the, the people um, through it. And so they, they, they had this superior attitude. And, and that sometimes comes up through um, the way that racists um, on demonstrations and things like that justify that we are the superior race, uh, whites are the superior race. I'll come on to that because I've heard that throughout it. I never thought it was going to have a mass basis to it, but maybe we, we can look at Hungary and other places and think well, what's going on um, in, in these parts of the, uh, the country, uh, the rest of the world. So that fascist, um, fascist ideas is the superiority of, of white people. Uh, but after the Second World War, obviously that was no longer accepted 
but it held its, its little uh, chinko hope uh, among small groups of fascists, but they could not get any kind of um, uh, hold. And also the economics of capitalism, with the, 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 what I would call the long boom for the 50s and the 60s and into the 70s, what you've seen was people's, uh, they needed to, to divide people, actually they needed more labour, especially in places like Britain and France and Germany and, and other places. So they welcomed, they, they, they toned down the need for division. But division comes as night follows day within capitalism because as they welcome people, at some point they have to reject people on the basis that uh, the economy is not doing too well, um, etc. And so therefore uh, the use of racism comes, comes back. Um, and the, the, and the need for, for, if you look at, say, for instance, the way Irish people came to, came to Edinburgh, maybe Al and others could maybe touch on this, the divisions within uh, the Edinburgh population or even Glasgow population, uh, the anti-Catholic uh, nature of, of, the, of that, but also that was coached in terms of, you know, you've seen the cartoons, the cartoons of the Irish, you know, the thick uh, paddy uh, imagery, you know, uh, all those kind of subhuman uh, methods of dividing so that the working class could never, would never unite as long as they got away with that, as long as they could divide us into um, people were, were stealing jobs. I always think it's ironic that uh, people say that, um, you know, uh, people of Eastern Europe, um, you know, the Romanians and others are coming to steal our jobs. Because I thought the Polish had stolen our jobs. <laughs> and then before the Polish, was it no the Asians that stole their jobs? So the Polish stole for the Asians, and the Asians stole for the West Indians, and the West Indians stole for. So it's been a long, long time since it's been our jobs uh, for them to steal. So <laughs> because if that's been um, anyway, so I, I always think that that's that's um, a useful um, weapon to, to 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 be used. So what we've we've seen is that capitalism needs. Racism, um, and, it, and because it was, in, you know, it's been really deep and in, in the, the ingrained into uh, the, the the tools of capitalism, uh, it is used um, very very often, and it's clearly in the world that we're living at the moment, it has become a very very um, dangerous tool for the ruling class to use against us, to split us and divide us and, and uh, challenge us. Uh, I mean, the ruling class is, is two means of, of domination, isn't it? Parliamentary demo uh, democracy or fascism. These are the two weapons. There's variants in between, but military di dictatorships, etc., etc. But fascism isn't the same as right-wing politics. You know, Trump isn't jailing Maybe you've heard on any Twitter that he's actually jailing trade unions at the moment, and I'll be uh, found to be wanting in my research. But uh, these people, the ruling classes of particular parts of the world, are um, moving towards fascism. They are they, um, taking the, the, the use of fascism uh, to, to defeat. One, because we are in the kind of long slump that we were in the 30s. There's, there's parts of What's happening that you could say, in your, if you were demoralised, you could say, my God, we're back to the 30s, you know. Uh, but the economy of the world isn't reached that stage. The, coll the collapse of capitalism isn't around the corner. Uh, though it's in a, a bad state and whatever, and many millions and billions of people are suffering from it, from climate change, all the way over to, to uh, mass unemployment, etc., etc., uh, or, or the uh, wages are being depressed uh, and people are living more and more in poverty. We're seeing that, that um, in, in society at the present moment. And that is also part of the reason, I think. You see, if, if you think, some people say that it's a question of education, that these, and, and we look at it, and I've seen footage all, uh, on, on uh, YouTube, etc., of people who are trying to, particularly in the SDL demonstration where they stick a camera in somebody's face and they ask them to explain their life or what they're all about and, and you just think, what is this person? You know, but it isn't based, racism isn't based on ignorance. 
Of course, it's their ignorance of many things, but it isn't a, that. That's not the reason for people turning to, to racism. Um, it's an ingredient, but it's not the reason because if, if it was, then we could we could deal with it within, within capitalism. We just need to get better schools, and, you know, get people um, better education, and you know, all of ha happy ever after. But the fact that it isn't about that. It isn't um, got those, the, 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 they've got these roots, but nevertheless, that's not the reason. And, and, and that challenges some of the people on the left, uh, mere liberal uh, views, that says it really is about that. And I, 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 for my sins, I went on one of these dead uh, channels to see what people were saying, if you're that ilk. And uh, it, was, it was like, we can deal with racism within capitalism. And it misses the point completely is that trying to deal with, cap with, with racism, you have to deal with capitalism. You can't, there isn't an answer um, within, uh, within capitalism to the question of racism. Because as long as they want, and they, if, if they get to a, a stage where they're feeling threatened, this is where fascism uh, is used as a tool. But fascism itself is a very dangerous thing for many of the capitalists as well. It's not an easy pickup. It's got its own theory, it's got its own view, uh, and therefore it, it is no something that they reach for very easily. But in saying that, uh, we are seeing in many parts of the world, and particularly in Europe, um, we're, we're seeing Trump, of course, with um, anti-immigrant, anti-migrant, um, you know, his, his attacks, he's, he's ready um, to launch an attack on Iran, you know, he's warned Iran if they talk back to him, he's, you know, he'll give it plenty, you know, the, the planes will be over, the submarines will be launching, um, cruise missiles or whatever. So there is a, 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 a tendency for Trump to, to start warmongering and that is very, very dangerous. But I think also what we saw in the last few uh, months um, and, and weeks is the way in which we can mobilise against Trump and against our own ruling class. Is that within that those huge demonstrations, um, we see the ingredients for our answer back. Is that it's possible to build um, across um, across the unions, across communities, across faiths etc, etc, a resistance to the general view. I think everybody that went on to the anti-Trump demonstration didn't think they were just there for one reason. It wasn't just because of his attitude to women or the attitude to, to migrants or the, 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 the locking up um, or, or children, etc. It was the whole totality of what he was about, what he stands for, and also how that <coughs> reflects itself across across the, the, the world. So I think when we see those demonstrations, and you know, you can take it with a pinch of salt, just how much the press coverage um, <coughs> indicated the size. Of course, as one council worker said, there was only about 7,000 on the Edinburgh one. Well, I was standing beside one of the polis, and I said, where's, where's the demonstration now? He says, and I was in the meadows. He said, it's just, it's just coming out of the, the, the parliament now. So from Abbey Hill along Regent Road, up the bridges, straight up to Nicholson Square through, 7,000 people would be in one of the shops. It's, it's, no, it's not true that, that it could be anything like that. But of course, uh, maybe we, we, we were slightly exaggerating the, the numbers, but nevertheless it was thousands of people. And across um, Scotland we did really well at Tumbria, um, sorry, and Aberdeen, and and then Glasgow on the Friday night. So, what we see, obviously, is, is, a, is a worrying sign as well. Last, in the last few months, the, the football fans, uh, the FLA and the DFLA, uh, Football Lads Associate, um, Alliance, have been mobilizing <coughs> what we would think is the start of a street army. And this, this slightly changes our tactics and what we are what we're about. Um, but nevertheless I think the United Front uh, tactic 
is still the right wing one today. I think what happened in the attack uh, on the RMT trade unionists, and particularly the Assistant General Secretary, Steve, um, is a fair warning, is a warning to, to the trade unions. And also, I think, if they, maybe they, they wouldn't be able to do this, but I, and I don't think it was activists, but I would imagine there would be some, for instance, Unite Workers were on the other side. They were on some of these demonstrations, you know, and if that is allowed to, to develop, if they're allowed to keep United and the Unite membership, etc., um, and go on to these, um, these demonstrations, I think it's, it's worrying. I think also the way that work is organised at the present moment, we've always said that fascism um, depends on its, its cadre among the middle classes. And you see that petty, petty bourgeois people, uh, small business people, etc., etc. Across the world, that is still the social base for fascism. That's, that's, its, that's its main leadership. Though Tommy Robinson is probably a different, um, you know, somebody, there, there was a banner on one of the demonstration called Robertson, a working class hero. And that, where, and that leads us to the, to, the, to the problem that we have. If we say, that the answer to fascism in the, in the right is still to line up with May, line up with forces on the right, because it's better to have them than the fascists. Then we're in some difficulty. It's better to have austerity and some people working than, a, you know, um, something different. What I'm really saying is that we need to make sure that we're not saying, and there's maybe an argument here in the room, about, for instance, um, the EU, uh, justifying um, the EU and saying that's a, that's a much more progressive force. Uh, and, and it's not been really the, the people who have created austerity in Europe. It's not been the people who are, who are, who are, um, are leaving the, the migrants to, to die in their hundreds and hundreds in the Mediterranean. Uh, it's some other force. I think that we can't be seen, to, we have to be radical, we have to have an attitude to, to, to capitalism, to be able to challenge the notion that Trump can be the hero of, working, of the working class in the rust buckets of America, or that, um, that um, Farage, you know, UKIP, though it's, in, it's been in a massive decline, and this is one of the problems, is they vacillate between electoral politics and street fighting politics. But what you did see is you kept trying to regain um, its, its, its ear uh, and, and, and make sure that it's, it was prominent in the demonstration. Wilder from Holland came over and was given a police escort onto the demonstration uh, last week um, to, to speak about his hero, Tommy Robinson. So what we're, we're finding is that it is, things are changing, but it's necessary for us in the anti-fascist, anti-racist anti movement, though we will link up with people who think it is possible to, to eradicate uh, racism under, under capitalism, but they will still march with us, still um, challenge the, the, the very notion of, um, of racism and it's... Uh, from a human point of view, from oh, this is not not really nice. I think, for instance, the Greens and others may be um, slightly to the left of that, but nevertheless, I think we can work with a whole range of organisations. And now we we need to really move because if those mobilisations happen, and I, I see now and I've, I've uh, joined it was that football fans, um, football lads and lasses, um, people are fighting to change the name a little bit because it's football lads against fascism, which is you know, a bit bad. Uh, so people are trying to challenge that and change the name. But nevertheless, going to football grounds, challenging the, the, the notion that uh, these football lads are speaking up for the poor working class, the white working class. Um, and that's some of the stuff that's, that's being used in the European field, is that, and I'll, I'll finish on this, is that what we're seeing is that um, across Europe, 
there's a lot of, a lot of things which you know you, you would have to worry about um, and that the fascists actually the Nazis are in are in not maybe not so much governments but they're certainly got MPs um, the, 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 the recent one where 97 in Germany were, were elected um, and 40 of them as far as the, the leader uh, the woman leader of, of that party who decided that she was not going to stay in the room because what she was saying against these Nazis it meant that she was going to be physically um, um, hurt as well and she walked out she said 40 of those, those MP are open Nazis you know, so what we're now seeing on the back of this uh, anti-immigrant, uh, Islamophobia, uh, anti-Semitic um, rhetoric, but also more than that, people are beginning to to, to fear for their life um, as well, and for their mosques or for their Sikhs, uh, for their temples and, and whatever. So there's clearly a need to get. I think we were we have been cushioned a lot bit in Scotland over the SDL. See when we see the SDL, and we've been out every time that they've turned out and whatever, and we've seen them in small numbers. We've seen the resolved riches that they are, you know. But there is more than that um, around. You know, we've had national action. We've had other fa uh, uh, um, Nazi organisations trying to recruit in universities, try and recruit among that. That, that group of people that they think they can build a cater, cater out. So really, I think that what we're, what I think there's good optimistic views, um, view that that says that we can defeat them, but we're, we've got a problem about the scale of, or um, or the problem that we have, and we have to match it, and that means we need to work um, in a in a united front that includes everybody. Uh, that, that, that wants to come uh, and support it. And that is particularly within the organised working class, the trade unions, the communities, uh, and the workplaces and universities and colleges. Uh, if we can create a uh, unity among that. The, the one thing I think we need to be clear about, people can take a, a position that I'm not going to match with them because that was a disaster of Germany. Um, what happened is the, the Labour Party uh, and the, the, the then Tories, uh, would, sorry, the Communist Party and the Labour Party uh, wouldn't agree. And I think Trotsky talked about uh, an Aesop uh, uh, tale, which was two bullocks. Um, they were in the, a slaughterhouse. Uh, one had a CP on its side, and the other one had the, the SDP on its side, and they were. You have to stretch it a bit, imagine this. They were having a conversation <laughs> in uh, cow language. And uh, basically, one of the, the CP, uh, sorry, the Labour Party said, uh, Why don't we unite together when, when the guy's coming to slaughter us? Why don't we? And they, of course, the CP said, No, no, you're a social fascist. So it wasn't a, the, the idea was that if there was unity, united front, then they could have beat for, um, Hitler. They had the numbers. And they had the, the they had the cadre, and they could have organised it in Germany. But because they were fighting each other and following Stalin's line that uh, one was as bad as the other, um, you know, fascists will deal with the fascists. They will deal with the the, the, the Labour Party. It, it was never going to, um, and it led to a complete disaster with tactics. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um...